I'm going to try something a little bit new in this version of the podcast. We're going to focus on the theme of this week, which started with the episode that we did with David Landis around you know, mindset and growth and resilience and working through adversity to looking at the impact that mindset, skill set, and tool set have on performance. So let's lay out a couple of different definitions. Mindset is, I believe, uh, the combination of our attitudes plus our beliefs. You know, what's our attitude? What do we bring? How, how do we perceive certain things? And what do we believe? It is about perspective. Skill set, on the other hand, that those are our abilities. And our ability is the strength of our skill set is both based on both our, our ability to do certain things and our experience demonstrating the ability to do those things. So that's skill set, that's capability. So we have perspective, we have capability, and then finally we have tool set. Tool set are the things that create leverage. These are things like tools, processes, and the combination of tools and processes, which ultimately are systems. So tools, processes, and systems. And you can go pretty deep into the difference between tools, process, systems, and methods if you check out the most recent version of Think, Learn, Act. And that's our newsletter. It goes out every Sunday. If you're interested in a quick brief on a specific topic where you have an opportunity to learn, learn something new, think, reflect on it, ask a couple of questions, and then identify specific actions to take to apply it, check out Learn, Think, Act, and we'll include a link in the show notes. And this podcast is brought to you by that newsletter, the Learn, Think, Act newsletter. So mindset or perspective, skill set or capabilities, tool set, tools, processes, and systems. Well, let's put some of that into practice. And let's think about how do we apply, how do the combination of mindset, skill set, and tool set apply to growing our business or improving our financial situation if we're talking about it from a family perspective or maybe a self perspective. So business, how we make money, family, the people important to us, self or individual self. The first piece that we have to look at is what's our perspective on money? What's our perspective on revenue? How do we think about revenue? How do you think about revenue? How do you think about money? Where's your decimal point? When you need to make an investment in something, you're getting ready to buy something, you're excited about it. How much do you think about that investment if it's a $5 investment? What if it's a $50 investment? Maybe a $500 investment, a $5,000 investment, or a $50,000 investment? Or maybe one of those situations where you're getting ready to buy a house and it's a $500,000 investment. How does your view on money, on revenue, on value change depending on where the decimal point is? All we did is move a little dot. We moved a dot to the to the right of a number. How does your view on money change? $5, $50, $500, $5,000, $50,000, $500,000. It's a very simple way to look at it. It is hard to work through because that view on that decimal point will change depending on the specific scenario that you're working through. You know, am I buying something on behalf of others in a B2B environment or am I buying something for myself, an individual perspective, or am I buying something for my family, which is kind of like a B2B environment, although we treat it B2C, B2C, business to individual consumer, B2B, business to business. My view on the definitions between the two, B2C is about when I'm buying for on behalf of self. B2B is when I'm buying on behalf of others. So what is our perspective? What's our mindset when it comes to money? Do we have a healthy relationship with money? Do we look at it as a tool? Is it simply a resource? Is it a resource just like time? What is our view on money when it comes to thinking about growth, whether growing business inside our organization or growing money within our family? All right. Once we understand what our attitudes and beliefs are around money and how much power we give that specific tool or that specific resource, then we can get into things like skill set. What are our specific abilities and experience and maybe even expertise when it comes to making money or generating business or generating income, any of those things? What are our actual capabilities? Are we really good at sales? Are we great at marketing? Is customer success our jam? What, is, what are our current capabilities when it comes to 
generating revenue. And we can break that down. We can start to look at it and say, well, maybe there are some things that we need to learn and improve on when it comes to those skill sets, improve those skill sets. Maybe we hire somebody from outside of the organization. Maybe we build capability inside our organization. Maybe we go and test new things if we're focused on our family. But this segment here is really focused on what our specific capabilities are or our skill set. When we focus on skill set, what are our capabilities? What, is, what can we do and what have we done in the past? Once we identify gaps in that skill set, then we can move in to figure out what do we want to learn? What do we want to add? Maybe at this point in time, we're not ready to invest in those things. Anyhow, we've got our mindset, our perspective, our skill set, our capabilities. And then the last piece is leverage tools. So we can use money as an example, as a form of leverage in the form of advertising as a tool to help generate more money as an example. There are people who believe that 50% of your budget should be allocated toward marketing. I'm not one of those people. I've not been in a situation where I could allocate 50% of my budget toward marketing. But there are people out there who believe it, and that's a tool that they're able to leverage. The challenge with me leveraging that as a tool is I don't know how to use it. I don't know how to use the tool. It's like putting a hammer in my hand and asking me to crank down on a bolt. It wouldn't be good use of resources. We're working on it. And that's one of the things that Sean's working on. Our, our marketing intern, as you've, if you've been following along, he's working on how do we leverage some tools? How do we take advantage of tools to create leverage relative to the things that we're trying to improve or the things that we're working on? So things that can create leverage are tools, things that can create leverage are process and combined those tools and processes create our, our system. So a system that I use and that we're applying inside both the business from a Phoenix club perspective, a catalyst acts perspective and um, organizations I work with is the dare to grow model, demand, acquisition, retention, and expansion. And that applies whether you're looking at talent acquisition, people or customer acquisition, customers and money. So demand, how do we generate demand in the marketplace? What are our methods? Acquisition, what's our process? Retention and expansion, what are our methods and process to help do that? So imagine a story where we need to grow a business by or increase the amount of money that we have in savings by $2,500. Well, we can kind of go through the process and say, okay, what skills can we apply to generate that money? Can we go out there and work a part-time job? Can we go in and generate a coaching program? Can we go do something else to generate that money from a product that we deliver to the market? Do we know how to conduct outreach? Are there are ways that we can use blog posts or podcasts like this to create demand, apply our, our capabilities, our ability plus experience into the market to try to get those things moving along? And then what tools can we use to create leverage? Mindset, skill set, tool set. One of the questions I asked on LinkedIn earlier this week was which one's most important when it comes to performance? Well, in the absence of mindset, the other stuff doesn't work. I don't care what your skill set is and what your tool set is. If you don't have the right mindset, you're not in a position to be successful. So let's first focus there. Let's build the right mindset. Once we've solved for the mindset, then let's figure out the skills that are necessary in order to be successful. What do we have today? What is our current state? What is our desired state? What do we need to add? How do we go about addressing those? And then the last piece, once we've had the skills and we know how to do something, we go out and actually make the work work, then let's identify some tools that we can use to create leverage. I think one of the cool things about some of the functionality of some of these AI tools, whether it's a perplexity or a cloud or a chat GPT or any of these other tools. If you do not have the skill set and you're applying the tool to something you do not know, how do you know if it's actually going to work? How much waste are you creating? But imagine if you actually had the skills and applied that skill set to the tool set, what kind of leverage could you create? How do you know what kind of prompts you want to use? So I would love to hear from you how you think about mindset, skill set, and tool set. I'd love to know if this helped you 
it, with your perspective on mindset, skill set, tool set, if it helped to simplify your approach to thinking about mindset, skill set, tool set, and the application. And if you're willing to share a story with me, I'd love to hear a specific example where you had the right skill set and right tool set, but your mindset was getting in the way and you failed. And then on the opposite side, what happened when you changed or shifted your mindset and were able to apply that skill set and tool set and what kind of success did you achieve? Thanks for listening to this. Hope you enjoyed it. Next week, we're going to start with some questions. We have an awesome question around hitting sales targets for the second half of the year. I'm going to incorporate that into the discussion next week. If you know of somebody who would enjoy this podcast, please share it with them. Let me know via LinkedIn and or Twitter that you shared it. Those shares help provide access and exposure to the content, to the platform. Uh, Ideally, it helps make an impact out there with somebody who's struggling with working through one of these challenges. Sales is the thinking process. Business is the thinking process. Life is the thinking process. How are you thinking different about yours? And make sure you sign up for Learn, Think, 